As Motti may never have said, this will be a video of two halves. Or was it Jimmy Greaves? For all you youngsters or non-footballing types, Motti, or to give him his proper name, John Motson, was the eponymous English football commentator from the late 1970s to the early 2000s, known for some absolute pearls of wisdom. My personal favourite probably being, for those of you watching in black and white, Spurs are in the all yellow strip. Anyhow, enough of vintage footballers and commentators. What's this got to do with solar power? Well, in the first part of the video, I look at how you can chart inverter and battery parameters using the Solis Cloud web and mobile apps. This follows on from some comments I made in an earlier video when I said I felt Solis Cloud lacked some functionality in comparison to other solutions, the Give Energy app in particular. I'm grateful to Andrew Heggie for pointing me in the right direction. More of that in a moment. The second part, if you'll permit me, is a bit of a rant about the most recent Solis Cloud update. So, if you're not a Solis Cloud user, what's this video got for you? Well, feel free to scroll forward to the time shown on screen now, where you can see a normally mild-mannered Englishman get some things off his chest. Just one final comment. I'd like again to thank everyone who has liked, commented or subscribed to any of the earlier videos. I really do appreciate it. I read all comments and try to respond to most, though I can't guarantee a sensible answer every time. Anyhow, the ref's blown his whistle, so we'd better kick off. So where did all this start from? Well, I wanted to monitor how my battery's state of charge, or SOC, varied during the day. Why? Well, twofold, really. Firstly, as I've discussed in earlier videos, we've been experiencing repeated alarm code 2015 errors, which seem to only occur when the battery charge is at 100%. My thinking was that if I could look at the charts of SOC for the days where we'd seen those errors, and ideally battery voltage as well, they might possibly give some clues as to the underlying cause of the alarms. Secondly, having recently signed up to the Octopus Flux tariff, I was interested to see how our battery SOC profile changed throughout the day, and in particular around the evening peak rate period and afterwards. Having not immediately seen any functionality in Solis Cloud to allow me to chart the SOC percentage, and after skimming the operation manual with a similar result, that's when I sallied forth with my video moan. Whereupon a comment from Andrew Heggie showed me the error of my ways, with a pointer to where this functionality can be found. Hence why I possibly owed Solace an apology. Before that, however, let's look at how you can chart SLC and other inverted and battery parameters within Solace Cloud. Apologies for the limited resolution of the web screen recordings. My screen recorder is limited to 1080p. The mobile app screen recordings are much better, although not quite the same. The app is more limited in terms of functionality. But hopefully you'll get the gist. Although I'm sure most of you know how to log into Solis Cloud, we'll start at the beginning. Having entered username and password, we're normally taken straight away to the plant overview screen. From the plant list, we then select the required plant or system that is currently online. For most users, there'll only be one entry in this list anyway. This takes us to the overview screen, which, for me at least, is typically all I normally look at. Along the top of this screen are four high-level summary boxes, presenting the day's total yield, exported energy, charging and consumption figures. Skating your mouse over these boxes displays the corresponding monthly, annual and lifetime figures. I'll be honest and say I don't make much use of those figures, instead preferring to focus on the energy balance section, this typically being the source for my performance tracking and monthly updates. Although we can scroll backwards and forwards chronologically and see how the generation and consumption varies throughout the day, there's no way to display any other information, such as state of charge, on these two charts. The current system activity section gives you a rough idea on what's currently going on, but has some significant shortcomings, which I touched on last time. So how do we display state of charge? 
Rather than displaying the overview screen, we instead need to go to the device screen. And here we are interested, for the purposes of this video at least, in the inverter. Selecting the inverter serial number of interest, you could well have more than one if you have a multi-inverter setup, takes us to the inverter detail screen. Whilst we can see another instance of the current system activity, scrolling down the page takes us to the area of real interest. Here we can see a list of a whole series of parameters, either relating to the inverter, grid or battery and by selecting one or more parameters they can be added to the chart on the right hand side. First we'll add in battery SOC and then go back to the previous day so that we have a full 24 hours data to view. And hey presto, it's that simple. Stepping back further into the past we see that the SOC data is correspondingly updated. Now for a neat bit of functionality. See, I'll give credit where it's due. You can set up various personal templates containing whichever set of parameters are of interest. This means you can quickly switch between different groups of parameters without having to laboriously select or deselect them. Here I've set up a template named BMON1 comprising state of charge, battery voltage as determined by the inverter and BMS battery voltage. Selecting the template updates the chart as shown. Here I'm looking at the difference between battery voltage and BMS battery voltage as the state of charge starts to approach 100%. Has any of this led to any light bulb moment on the 2015 error question? Well no, not yet at least, but it's good to be able to see what's going on. So how do we create a template? First, select all the parameters of interest that you want to be shown on the chart. Then click the Add Template plus sign and fill in the Name and Remarks field. Note that the Remarks field is such that it cannot be left blank. Having clicked Confirm we can now see our new template titled Demo1 and can quickly switch between the two templates. Selecting the X displayed alongside the template name allows us to delete it when no longer required. And that's pretty much it. One final comment. The mobile app version of Solis Cloud does not seem to support template functionality and thus any templates created using the web page cannot be utilised in the mobile app. So there you go, a small mea culpa Solis Cloud. Thanks again to Andrew. OK, now moving on to the latest update. Oh. What have they done? First thing is, what about some release notes? What about just telling us what you've done and why you've done it? I mean, it, the only release notes I could find were those in the App Store for the mobile app. And they're a joke, three very short lines. The almost equivalent of saying, we've changed something. That's no good. Tell us what you're doing and why you're doing it don't need war and peace and again incorporate them into the app you send us a maintenance bulletin alert telling us you're going to update the system put the release notes in that alert or a link or a QR code or something but don't just don't just do nothing right now in terms of the functionality what have you done First, I mean, there's a whole series of things that have got my goat, if I can use that expression. But one of the main things are inconsistencies now that have crept in. Inconsistencies between the figures and the bar charts. Whereas in the past, I could look at the monthly bar chart and instantly see by just scanning along the top of the chart what the generation figure was for that day. But now there's an inconsistency because you've incorporated the amount of power going to the battery. So all the figures look wrong. 
Now, I'm not saying the date is wrong, but the presentation is just bobbins. It's a good Lancashire word for rubbish. Now, that's it's not just that, it's choice of colour. Now, I think it was the generation, I might have that wrong, but it's either the generation or consumption bar chart, used to be displayed either proportion in red and a proportion in green. Now, for me, I'm not colour blind, that was a good contrast. Now, I understand if the change has been made uh, because of people having colour blind people having difficulties, that's, that's fair dues, fully support that. But don't go and choose red and orange. Perhaps the two more similar colours you could have chosen. There are plenty of colour combinations that would meet the requirements of colour blindness but don't look the same. I mean, when you're looking on a small phone screen and you get red and orange together, God knows. Now, there are quite a few other um, comments, points that I could, I could list, but it would just become boring. One thing uh, you can do is just look in the app store and look at the recent uh, comments from various users and they pretty much sum up how I feel We've taken what is a you know a reasonable app and just turned it on its head uh, and I don't know what for um, so I don't know just doesn't seem right now doesn't mean the app isn't usable yeah you can still use it it's not broken but it's nowhere near as usable it's not friendly it's not user friendly and on that point I, d I do wonder have, have you put any of these changes in front of users? Have you asked for their opinion? Do you do any sort of beta testing? It just seems as though these changes have been made for some reason that isn't clear to us. Let's, let's just leave it at that. So I've ranted, I don't know how long for now, but it's probably long enough. So I guess I'd sum it up. Don't just make changes for the sake of make change, making changes. Make things better, not worse. But most importantly, communicate. Tell us what you're doing and why you're doing it. And then take us along with you. Okay, so uh, whilst I did give a small mere culpa on the charting functionality in the first part of the video, I'm afraid in the best traditions of Eurovision, it's null point from me for the latest update. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.